Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Shavi Zane, and uh, I'm coming on to bring a message for you all in regards to who you used to be, who you are currently, and who you are becoming. I feel like this message is very important because we're all at different stages of our transformation in terms of going from the caterpillar to the butterfly, okay? Um, we're all at different stages in terms of our awakening and different stages in terms of being able to release certain situations. Um, you may still find yourself surrounded with these uh, circumstances. So just know that you may be at different stages when it comes to what I'm bringing forth here. Or it, I mean, if it doesn't resonate with you at all, then you know you can always check my other messages or come back at a different time for a message that's more in alignment with where you're at. But I do want to bring this forward so that you can know where this path is guiding you and so that you can clearly see those areas where you might have to put in a little bit more nurturing for yourself so that you don't get derailed off of your path or so that you don't cause additional stumbling blocks or allow others to come in and cause additional stumbling blocks or bring in additional lessons that you may not necessarily need um, so let's just go ahead and get right into it. I've already laid the cards out for the sake of saving some time because I do find that I can talk for an hour or longer. Y'all already know this. So I'm trying to shorten my messages um, for the attention span of the majority. So let's just get right into it. So I'm starting off here in terms of where you are coming from, who you used to be, okay? And like I said, we're all in different timelines. And so it may not, you know, you just place it where it belongs here. So... I have the lovers coming out in the reverse. I feel like you was in this energy of attracting to you people who were karmic partnerships, karmic friendships, karmic contracts. You might have had certain jobs that was uh, very toxic to your energy. But this is that uh, that card of just toxic connections, okay? And I feel like many of them was brought together by an initial spark, okay? You might have found yourself kind of... Um, acting off of passion versus your intuitive wisdom. There was something about being driven by, this could be your sexual energy for some of your partnerships. If you connected with certain karmic relationships, it could have been because of that initial spark or that sexual passion that the two of you may have possessed with one another. But I feel like these, a lot of these connections were not going anywhere. Traveling came out in the reverse. Many of these connections was just kind of stuck and stagnant where you came in with that initial spark, that passion, but that was not enough to be the driving force to actually allow the relationships or the connections, whether it's relationships, friendships, like I said, you take it how it resonates to actually move you towards success. And so the chariot is here in the reverse. It was something about these connections that was stagnating your forward movement and your growth as a whole, as an individual. And so I feel like because you was very resistant to going within, doing the work to listen to that, that voice within, listening to your intuition in regards to these people, places or things that you found yourself um, involved with, you resisted that. And so it was this energy of, I almost feel like you kind of held on for a long time to avoid conflict, okay? Okay to avoid chaos. I feel like this energy was very much so present in these connections because they was very karmic. So there was a certain chaotic energy that was there, but I feel like the driving force of what kept the connections cohesive, especially relationships was the sexual energy. Okay. Um, and it was this thing of the tower moments. Okay. I feel like there were potentially multiple tower moments that happened with these connections because they was not built on a solid foundation. The structure was not stable from the very beginning. From the very beginning, it was karmic. From the very beginning, it was built on a false foundation. And so I feel like you came into a space where you begin to hold on to try to avoid conflict, to try to avoid more tower moments because these tower moments were brought into your life to bring lessons, okay? Okay. These tower moments, like this person is wearing a bandage on their head. So it shows that these tower moments were very painful. These tower moments, um, you know, some of you might have even dealt in relationships that was very abusive or physically violent or 
mentally, uh, emotionally abusive, whatever the case may be, it was something very toxic and chaotic about it where there was constant moments of these situations, these connections coming to an end. If this was a job situation, you might have found that you was constantly moving from one job to another or staying put, holding on to certain type of career paths um, because you wanted to avoid losing it all. Even though you was not happy in these situations, you wanted to avoid you wanted to create some sort of stability for yourself. And so it was that survival mode. I feel like you was in survival mode. The person that you used to be was someone who was in survival mode because this person is the wounded warrior. Someone who has been through a lot but is still holding on. So it was this energy of not allowing yourself to let go. Even though the Most High was bringing in all types of scenarios, you was attracting to this situation many lessons that was showing you clearly that, okay, I'm going to bring this down because this is not it. This person is not it. This friendship is not it. It's not stable. It's not solid. It's very toxic for you. But there was something about you resisting the transformation. And so the moon card comes out right behind this, which shows me that there was a lot of things that you was not able to see clearly. And I feel like this was... Um, largely due to fear it was a largely due to fear of facing those things that are in the dark okay it was like you wanted to submerge yourself in these things um or to kind of suppress i'll say you wanted to suppress a lot of these things that needed to be brought to the forefront you saw that these situations was not good for you but you still resisted listening to your intuition in regards to a lot of these people places and things and so what else is coming out is the excuse me, the eight of cups in reverse, you found yourself going back. You might've walked away, but you always went back out of fear of what was on the other side. Okay. Because this is traveling, you know, this traveling card came out in the reverse. So taking that road, less travel, taking that path, you know, um, which could have been an uphill, you know, a lot of lessons it would have taken you, you know, it might not have been easy to move forward, but I feel like it was even harder for you. You had to learn, a lot of lessons because you stayed put because you held on for so long. So for some of you, if these are relationships, you held on for multiple years to certain type of toxic people. If it's certain jobs, you held on for many years, even though it kept crashing down, you might've kept going back to the same type of career path or friendships. You might've attracted the same type of people, or you might've held on to the same people who was toxic for your energy for a very long time. This could also be dealing with certain habits, certain patterns, Okay, that might have caused tower moments for you in your life, but you still kept being drawn back to it out of fear of what was on the other side if you released those codependencies. And so, yes, you did continue to go back. This is who you used to be. Then you have the hangman. This is like you sacrificing, um, pretty much sacrificing yourself to stay stuck in a position. Seeing things more clearly, you was be, I feel like after many of these lessons came through, you were starting to see things more clearly. But for some of you, you stayed in certain situations in ter because of the security that it brought for you, okay? Some of you, if this is dealing with work, you might have stayed at a job even though you knew it was toxic. You tried to avoid conflict at all costs, but you held on to this thing, feeling beat up, battered, bruised, only because of the security that it brought for you. And then for others, this could be an actual long-term connection or multiple connections where you stayed with certain people because of the financial security that it brought for you in your life. And so you stayed stuck in that tree, even though you saw things very clearly, you was no longer confused about these things. A large part of you ignored it. Awareness came out in reverse. You saw things clearly being in the situation, but you ignored it. You pretended that you did not see and you created this self-imposed self imprisonment, okay? Mentally, you felt stuck. Physically, because you felt stuck mentally, you created a scenario to keep yourself stuck physically. And so this is where you was, you know? And this card actually came out with the Seven of Swords in reverse. Seven of Swords in reverse is seeing the deception clearly. You recognize that you was you may have that you was deceiving yourself and that you had other people around you that was deceiving you, but you still entrapped yourself in these situations all because of the security that it brought for you or this false sense of security. Because I feel like ultimately 
because you kept experiencing these tower moments, you never really had any real true security. Uh, it was something that you created in your own mind to avoid taking this journey and to avoid having to face those things that you was in the dark about, okay? So this is where I see, this is what I see in terms of where you, who you used to be. Now, moving into who you are currently, I see this postponement card is coming out in the reverse. There's something about needing to see things from a more colorful perspective. I feel like there's a resistance to the amount of time that things are taking. Maybe there's something about your patience that's running a little thin. And this is why you have the patience card coming out here, which is uh, more, more so emphasizing the need to be patient while things are growing, while things are developing, whether this is your own internal development or for situations to actually develop that you have been praying for. Um, those things that you've been setting your intentions towards. Now, you do have the Queen of Pentacles coming out in the reverse. So for some of you, because I saw the King of Pentacles in the upright in terms of who you used to be and the Queen of Pentacles coming out in the reverse for who you are now, some of you could be leaving long-term relationships where you saw that there was an uh, imbalance in terms of the stability, in terms of the reciprocity. This could be in terms of the material, um, what they was giving materially, or what they was giving just, you know, if both of you, because this, the Queen of Pentacles in reverse is someone who can be overly focused in on finances, but can also be very codependent and um, unstable, okay? N not really grounded. And so you, you found yourself attracting these type of partnerships or friendships or whatever the case may be. If this is concerning a work situation, you might find yourself losing more than what you're gaining at this point. Um but I feel strongly for many of you, this will be dealing with a past relationship, maybe something that was long term for some of you, even a marriage where you found that it was not equal give and take. And so I feel like you're releasing that type of energy from your life currently. The page of cups comes out in the reverse. I feel like you're starting to see things more clearly in terms of whether or not these people are actually genuine when it comes to their expression of love. I do feel, though, that because of what you have gone through. Because you have new vision coming out in the reverse. It's something about you're still focused in on the past. Because a new vision is thinking of creating something for the future. Creating a new version of yourself or a new version of what life might look like. A new version of what your love life might look like or your career might look like. You're not able to really create the vision for yourself in your own mind. Because you might be overly focused in on the losses that you had to take in the past. And this could be why the postponement card is here. You could be either very focused on the losses that you took or the betrayals that happened in your life. Or you could be overly focused in on the amount of time that it's taking for these things that you've been praying for to come into fruition. There's something that needs to shift though in terms of you redirecting your, your mind, your focus on a new vision. Um, because I do, okay, let's just, let me just say this. The seven of cups is here in the reverse. It's very clear that you see things clearly. You're not confused anymore. I feel like you're no longer confused about what you want. I feel like you've taken so many losses in the past that you're, you're able to see what you don't want to attract to you, but you want to be very careful with being overly focused on what you don't want. Because you will attract to you what you don't want, being focused on what you don't want. And this is why you have to redirect your focus in on what you do want, creating that new vision. So the postponement, there could be a resistance to the amount of time that it takes for this vision to come into fruition. And so maybe the postponement is um, things are a little stagnant right now only because you have to redirect, redirect your vision on what is going to actually allow you to continue to evolve and to move towards those things that bring you comfort, happiness, peace, stability. So eight of wands in reverse. I feel like things forward movement is kind of, it's very stagnant right now. Okay. This is stagnant energy. Some things might've even come to a halt, but it's because you're needing to take charge. Okay. With the king of wands here, 
and this energy currently, you're needing to take charge to, you know, become passionate again about your vision, become passionate again about those things that you desire, shift your focus, okay? Um, I do see that in your current energy, you are welcoming in new things, okay? New offers. This could be financially. This could be um, new offers in terms of love, commitment, stability. But this will be that seed that you plant that actually turns into, into something great. The Ace of Pentacles is that, that start to something that actually grows and becomes very abundant. And so you're being called to move towards these new opportunities that's coming towards you, but they could be stagnant because of what you're focused on. So right now you need to be shifting the energy, alchemizing that energy and doing what's necessary because the sun is also in the reverse. So this could indicate maybe needing to get out into the sun more often. I know that's something that I need to work on. I am not the type of person that likes cold weather. And so I end up hibernating like a bear. But I also know that the sun revi revitalizes me. It rejuvenates me. It's my life source energy. And so... Getting out into the sun is really important because if you are someone who is like a spring baby or a summer baby and you get more down during the winter season or whatever the case may be, then that can cause you to, that can lower your vibrations too and cause you to be overly focused in on things that just don't feel the greatest, you know, thoughts that just don't bring the greatest emotions. And so the sun in reverse is needing to Step into that high vibrational energy again. Finding ways that you can be carefree, like this child here, you know, transparent and carefree, you know, finding ways to express yourself and to be more open and, um, you know, just to lighten up your energy. Then you have here the four of swords in the reverse. So currently you might not be resting as well, or you might be feeling restless. Maybe you feel like you've done a lot of work to heal, but again, you're just trying to, you know, you're waiting for the fruit to come in. You're waiting to see, to, to reap your harvest. And so you may be feeling restless, wanting to come out of this energy of, you know, you feel like, okay, I've done enough resting. I've done enough uh, healing, but you're being called to take another look because if you're not focused in on the past per se, then you're overly focused on the outcome and wanting to see things come into fruition. And so... You're needing to shift that. I'm still holding this card. So yes, yeah, seven of cups in reverse. I mentioned coming out of confusion and seeing things very clearly. I do feel that in this process, though, if you are one of those people who was kind of looking into the past a lot, it has had some, it's blocked you off in terms of maybe you being vocal and um, communicating your truth. Your throat chakra could be blocked off, or this could also be you becoming more cold, okay? Blocking off your heart chakra all the way across the board because maybe you feel like love is not coming in. Maybe you feel like that financial um, that financial stability that you desire is not coming in or those new opportunities that you've been praying for is not coming in. It's something about you pulling back, retracting your emotions right now. And so I feel like you're needing to do some work on your heart chakra to really balance your energy back out again. Um, work on, you know, staying in the now. That's very important, staying in the now, creating good energy second by second. Um, one thing that I was actually looking into is that um, the body actually creates, every second it creates 10 million new cells, okay? That's a whole lot of new cells. Within three months' time, you are, com you are a completely different person. You have pretty much... Uh, disappeared and came back, you know, it just, you just didn't see it happen, but it's been happening. So within three months time, you become a completely new birth uh, person, a whole rebirth of who you are. And so in knowing that and knowing that physically your body is constantly going through changes and, and, and re reinventing itself every three months. Okay. You need to know that staying in the moment, you have a lot more power than you think in terms of being the co-creator and working alongside the natural the natural cycle of life okay as as a spirit having a human experience you know that your your thoughts create things and so when you begin to speak life into yourself when you begin to empower yourself when you do the work to heal and you shift your energy you shift your thoughts then you shift your vibration 
you're as you do this, as you as you consistently do this, while your body is already doing its job automatically and transforming, you should be working and aiding in that so that as those cells express themselves, as that, as that DNA expresses itself, as the body is renewing itself, when you come through and you're um, and you have fully shifted and transformed within that three month period, you can say that not only did your body um, go through the transformation, but so did your mind and your spirit because you was working in unison with the nature. You was working in unison with the natural process of life rather than against it. OK, so we're constantly changing. We're constantly evolving. But, you know, we have a lot of impact on what the outcome looks like in three months time. If you're overly focused in on things that make you feel bad and sad and you're doing this on a regular basis, you're focused in on what you don't have, what you've been through and what, you know, the pain that you've been through, you know, what you could have did, what you should have did, what you would have did. That's all low vibrational energy. And so as your body is, um, uh, you know, shape, you know, shifting and transforming and every, you know, those cells are replacing and replicating themselves, you're telling your, your DNA to express an energy that looks like, you know, as within, so without your DNA expression will look just like that. So within three months time, you might look 10 years older. Within three months time, you might uh, be, you know, be feeling physically worn out, you know, or feeling like, you know, you're, you're 10 years older in terms of your ability to, you know, your energy, you know, 10 years older. So just be very cognizant of what you do, how you're taking care of yourself, how you're nurturing yourself. Your thoughts are very powerful. So I'm just, I'm seeing that right now in your current energy, you're just being called to open up your heart again. Don't allow the past to block off your heart or don't allow the lack of movement or the, the, the pace of things to cause you to block your heart off thinking, well, it's not coming. So I might as well just give up. And then you go back to thinking about the past. Keep moving forward. Keep folks, stay focused on the vision. Stay focused on healing yourself. Do not resist the process. And now I'm going to move into who you're becoming because this was a beautiful spread. What came out is the nine of pentacles, which is that financial stability, that independence, lack of codependent behavior. You're out of survival mode and you're moving into thriving. Those seeds that you have planted have come into, you know, they've ripened. They're, the harvest is ready. You're moving into independence, okay, um, and just straight stability, confidence is up you know with all of this yellow here i see a lot of solar plexus energy i see a lot of green here so i feel like you're moving into this energy of just self-love okay and this is what you're exuding a lot of this um very bright and you know very bright and beautiful energy that's what you're moving into this laziness card came out in the reverse so you're going to be coming out of that energy of maybe staying in the house too much or maybe staying in uncomfortable situations and allowing yourself to get back up, you know, and to have that passion and that zeal and that excitement for life again. Um, you have here the justice card came out. So this is balancing of the scales. I told y'all in 2022, you know, you the scales are balancing. The karmic scales are, are balancing. Whatever you put out there, if you put negative things out there, then you are receiving negative things back. You put positive things out there, you receive positive things back. And so the, the um, scales are balancing out here. And... Um, yeah, the number 11 breaks down to a number two. So moving into that energy of receiving justice. For some of you, if you're dealing with court cases, you're going to receive your justice in regards to that, especially if you had to leave a long-term co uh, connection. If you're divorcing or something like that, you're going to th things are going to balance out for you and you will be moving into independence, being single, strong, um, and stable, okay? And I say that because the hierophant came out in the reverse, so that could mean that um, you are actually, you know, severing a long-term commitment. This could also be you severing contracts in terms of old jobs, old career paths, you know, and taking the leap of faith to even start your own business. If you're focused in on creating your own, you know, becoming your own boss, I see you um, leveling up there and doing very well in that, in that um, aspect of your life. And then also with the Hierophant coming out in the reverse, I feel like this is moving away from that traditional way of, um, of your perception of spirituality, okay, and and shifting things and doing something that's totally different from the traditional way of doing things or how you might have been conditioned to do things in your past. There's something about 
um, doing things differently, but this shift is actually balancing things out for you, okay? It's not like it's taking you um, to a space where you're going backwards. It's actually taking you forward down your divine path. Then what came out, which is really beautiful, is the um, King of Cups and the Queen of Cups. Now, this is a divine partnership. Not only is it a divine partnership, but these are two people who are emotionally available to one another. These two people come together with open hearts, okay? Full of love, ready to express their love to one another, ready to, um, because they're looking right at one another. It's like that energy of, you know, it's equal give and take. You know, you don't feel depleted. Both people are able to express themselves um, emotionally and um, give love to one another equally. So this is a lot of heart chakra energy, a beautiful energy um, of two divine partners coming together. So I feel like you're leaving old old connections. Some of you might be leaving a marriage and moving into a divine partnership, the one that was divinely crafted for you because you've done the work to heal. And then you have here the source coming out. So this is you doing the work to go within. Of course, the source for me is that divine connection to the Most High God, but also knowing that he has created me as a co-creator, as a goddess to embody the energy um, of, of that divine connection and to become the co-creator of my life. And so going within to the source to build, and this actually is, um, it looks like the cell that I was just talking about in terms of the cells replicating themselves every second. Um, so it's like being very cautious of your nature and going with the flow, going with the cycles of life. You're actually working alongside to become the co-creator, like I said before. And so then we have the Ten of Wands in reverse. This is about dropping all of those burdens from the past that you used to carry with you, whether this is emotional baggage, physical baggage, spiritual baggage, whatever the case may be, you're releasing these things now. You feel like you, you know that it's time for you to let them go. And so that could also be you letting go of holding on to outcomes, holding on to time frames okay um because when you're overly focused in on how long it's going to take for your your harvest to come in that's still a form of lack mentality that means that you feel that there's a lack of time so lack mentality can deal with anything it can deal with you feeling like you don't have enough financially you don't have enough love you don't have enough um uh your gifts you don't have enough to offer to the world lack mentality can cover many different areas and so if it's dealing with time, then you could be focused in on that having lack mentality in certain terms of feeling like time is not on your side. And so this is where you come into that energy of resisting, you know, the growth, you know, instead of allowing things to unfold naturally, you kind of work against it because you're ready. You want to take action now. The King of Wands is all about taking action. OK, he doesn't sit and wait. He moves forward through with that passion. And so it's like you want to take action now towards these new opportunities, but you may become bitter because you feel like it's just not coming in fast enough. And so then things get halted. It gets postponed until you shift your vision and get back on track. Um, and so what else came out? I got the four of wands. You are becoming more stable. You are becoming um, where, where you had those unstable foundations where things was rocky and they always came crashing down. The four of wands comes in to indicate that stability. The number four is all about a stable foundation. And so... I feel like you're moving towards stability. Some of you may be moving into a new home. This could also indicate getting uh, married to your divine partner, which we saw the Queen and King of Cups coming out. Then you have the Four of Pentacles coming out in the reverse. This is about releasing, no longer holding things close to you. I feel like this is about being more open, being more transparent, um, being more free to not be overly focused in on finances or the material things of life, but just allowing yourself to just be. OK, you also have this card of aloneness coming out. I feel like you're moving into this energy. You are becoming this person who is comfortable with being alone in your path, in your journey until you meet with your divine partner. Um, and so in this energy. Is you taking the road less traveled fearlessly and courageously, unapologetically. OK, then you have death coming out here. So you are becoming transformed. You are changing. OK. That's that death and that rebirth energy. So you are changing. And a lot of these old cycles with the Ten of Pentacles in reverse, this is like you literally closing out cycles with maybe certain family members or certain family structures or certain 
jobs or um, just certain in a certain ideal of what stability look like. I feel like you have transformed. You're transforming in terms of what stability looks like for you. What really creates stability? I feel like because you're coming out as the king and queen of queen of cups. You're seeing things from a space of love now. You're not going to see it from a space of materialism, but you're seeing it from a more uh, spiritual perspective. And you're understanding that when you lack this energy of love, when your heart is blocked off, you only attract to you people, places, and things that's going to be a direct reflection of that. And so who you are becoming is someone who is learning to release control, to stay in the now, to express gratitude, to become the co-creator of your life, and to be fine with your independence and your solitude until the harvest bears fruit. And so that's what I'm seeing for you all in terms of who you used to be, who you are becoming. I mean, who you are now and who you are becoming. Like I said, take it how it resonates because we're all on different timelines and different uh, levels in terms of our spiritual journey. But I'm hoping that this would that this did bring some clarity for you all. I'm just going to give some advice and then I'm going to close out. I feel like strongly a large part of the advice is to be patient with the process and do not be overly focused in on the timing of uh, when your harvest is going to bear fruit. It's like watching your crops grow. You can't stand there and watch them grow because then you'd be very disappointed with the time, you know, but when you just plant the seeds and then, you know, nurture them, do the work to nurture those seeds, but don't be overly focused in on how long it takes for them to grow. Then you allow the natural process of growth to happen. Just like this woman who's pregnant with this baby. You can't rush a baby to come into the world. It's just going to come when it's ready. Um, and the most uncomfortable pregnancies are the ones where you're overly focused in on how long it's taken. So I can tell you that from experience. So let's see. The advice is the universe. So this is about closing out old cycles and also knowing that the energy that you're projecting out into the universe is very important. Your thoughts, what you're creating is very important. You have blessings here at the bottom of the deck. So, you know, just know that these blessings are coming in. They're coming in, but they was postponed for a time so that you could shift your thought process. Um, look at this. Simplicity. Staying as light as a feather is where you're being, what you're being called to do to, in order to create a more balanced foundation for yourself. Stay as light as that feather, okay? Um, don't be heavy or weighed down or burdened down with um, certain emotions or the past or trying to be overly concerned about materialism. Just be. You know, you have boredom and discontentment. This is all about staying indoors a lot, so needing to get outside more, like I mentioned earlier with the sun coming out in the reverse. Um, needing to get outdoors more so that you're able to, you know, it, it's good for your energy, first of all, but it's also good to keep you in, in understanding that there is no lack. There's an abundance of all things. Um, and that's another number four. So all about, um, that stable foundation from within. Then let me pull one more for advice, recognition and reward. So yeah, many of you are going to be recognized and rewarded for, the seeds that you have planted. You're going to have people that's going to be cheering you on and applauding you for those things that you have done. And if this is not something that happens publicly, then this is something, this is like a spiritual reward that comes in when you are recognized for the efforts that you have put in to heal yourself and to allow things to unfold naturally. And so that's what I got for you all. I love you. If you want a private reading from me, you can always email me. Um, and thank you all for the likes and the subscribes and the donations. And I look forward to see you all, uh, seeing you all. Oh, let me mention this, the fast real quick. So for those of you who have done the fast with me, um, I'm happy that you all was able to join. I can say personally in my own testimony that that my fast is over tomorrow. It's been a minute since I've actually fasted. And so, um, I didn't realize, you know, I, I had a slight codependency on food. Okay. I found myself feeding my children and my hands would be shaking. Okay. The food looked so good and smelled so good. I was feeling some type of way for the first day or two. Okay. And so that let me know that I had a codependency on food. Um, and so that was revealed to me. And I also felt a lot more emotional. Um, and I think that's another, if, if that's why I was able to see that I had a codependency on food because I was starting to feel more emotional during my fast, which lets me know that 
In my times of feeling emotional, I might have found myself eating in order to suppress that emotion. And so it helped me to address that, okay? Um, I don't know what your personal experiences uh, have been, but I would love to hear about it in the description box below. I did see another young lady said that it actually helped her to um, unveil someone who was in her life who really didn't have good intentions towards her. And this person actually ended up showing their, you know, taking their mask off. And so, yes, these types of things, you'll find that these types of things happen or you'll find that maybe your receptivity in terms of your spiritual gifts awakens more. Whatever the case may be, your fast is never in vain. And so I'm glad that I've done my fast because I was able to really see that. So I will likely start doing um, intermittent fasting so that I don't have so much of a codependency because I didn't realize I had one until, you know, I'm salivating, feeding my children. And if they're not eating all the food, I'm looking at them like, you. oh, so you're not going to eat that. You're really just not going to eat that, okay? Feeling some type of way because, you know, so I got to work on some things, okay? I still got some work to do. Um, and so thank you all for supporting and joining. You know, I'm, it was beneficial, I'm sure, to you all. So just let me know, you know, how that worked out. And I will talk to you all next time.